Hello and welcome to a new build order guide. This time for 26 plus 2, castle drop into unique unit on arena. This is pretty much the minimum population I would go if you're going for a wooden gold unique unit. And it's a pretty advanced build order in terms of you need to really have your efficiency and your tightness of your builds quite down before doing this. A more intermediate one I would say would be 28 plus 2. I should also note that if you're doing this with sieves that have unique units that cost food and gold, it's a little bit harder than wood and gold, which is why I'm going to be doing food and gold this time. But obviously it's going to be easier and you can do even faster ups with wood and gold units like, for example, Portuguese for the organ or Burmese for the iron buy. So there's a time on screen you can skip to if you want to skip this entire introduction. I'm going to be rambling for a little bit about what says you could do this with, good situations, and various things like that. So for use, uh, for I keep saying use, I really should stop doing that. For those of you who have stuck around through this introduction, what we're going to be doing is the Spanish FC to Conquistadors 26 plus 2. You can run your TC in Castle, no problem whatsoever. Quite a simple build as far as builds go, it has no complex things. You just have to be very efficient, which is why this has a more advanced rating. So the civs you could really carry this with, basically... Any civilization with a ranged unique unit, a decent ranged unique unit, is ideal for this. So there's quite a lot of cities we could talk about. Uh, but the ones that are more notable are Berbers in some situations. Britons can get away with quite a lot of situations going longbows. It's also really smart for Britons. They could do faster ups, obviously as a wooden gold, but it can be a possibility if against something like Aztecs. Longbows against eagles in Castleage are not that bad. Burmese, of course, they have a very good ranged unique unit. Uh, Chinese for the Chokonu, they have a different build, but the same concept still applies. Cummins, of course, with the Kipchak, really nice to micro unit. Franks, not with the throwing axemen, they're just not a great unit. Infantry throwing units, it's it's a bit dubious. Something else that's also quite weak, like Franks, is the Malians. You have Italians with the Genoese. I wouldn't really recommend it so much because in Castle Age they're not that strong. They're only really strong when they get elite in Imperial Age. Uh, Koreans, war wagons are too expensive. And mines, this is definitely a very good build for them. You could even do one pop faster without any problems whatsoever as mines. Mongols, it's really nice to take map control with them going by, uh, by going Mangadai. You could do really fast castle drops and you could beat scout builds almost. And... Uh, Clean up scouts, no problem, get the relics, and uh, even have a little bit of a push going on. Portuguese, top civ for doing this with. They are really, really strong civilization when you get the organs. Spanish, conquistadors, and Turks with the Janissaries. Same principle, Janissaries are a little bit stronger. Vietnamese with the Rathans, that's also it's a viable unit. I don't say that uh, Rathans are that strong in the Castle Age Arena, but they could be okay. Depends how you use them. So the reason we're doing Spanish is because they have the least... We're wanting a sieve that has a wood and gold unique unit, uh, sorry, food and gold, as it's more expensive and harder to get running. And I want to make a guide for that. If you could do that, then you could do wood and gold, no problem. I'll explain the differences when we get to those points. And also Spanish has sort of the least noticeable economy bonus out of those food and gold civilizations of the useful unique units. So, I think we should probably just jump right into it, and I'll explain as we go. Fairly standard start. Just your two build your house, and one builds the second house, and you just take sheep under a TC. I'm playing on Explored, that way I don't need to worry about, you know, playing while speaking. When I'm speaking and I'm scouting, a lot of my attention goes into that. And I'd rather focus more on the tips in the guide. As this is Arena, we'll delete our back walls. Contrary to some of my more recent guides, I'm not going to entirely avoid various small efficiency tips and things you should know with basic FCs in this build. But again, it's not for complete beginners, and if it's something you don't understand, watch a more intermediate tutorial on a more basic fast castle into unique unit. So we got our 6 on sheep, now we want to do 4 on wood. So what differentiates a 26 plus 2 from a 28 plus 2, aside from timing? Well, in my opinion, the, with my builds, what differentiates it is no second lumber camp. You've got 6 villagers on the one lumber camp. 
the two extra villagers come from wood. The two that you have less. I'd also recommend, as we're doing this with just three deer, if you have four it's going to be a lot easier for you. I'd also recommend pushing your deer whenever you're able to. You cannot do this build without pushing deer. The time you push your deer doesn't matter. For example, you can take your boars and have no problems and then take your deer after. But if you find everything and you just want to push your deer then you go scouting, then that's perfectly fine. So we got our six sheep for on wood. Next villager needs to go get the boar. Now we're going to be pushing this deer a little bit on the early side if we go and get our boar now. Then he's going to be arriving too early. So what we're going to do is we're going to build a house with him. Usually what I would do is I'd build a house with the villager that comes after. So for example, six sheep, four wood, go get the boar. Next villager builds a house on the way to the mill. Or builds a house next to the TC and then goes to uh, the boar. But in this case, if you have more food on the TC and you can handle, just go and build a house next to the boar. So we want at least eight taking food under the TC. If you, have a live, if you still have a live deers, then you want to have just a little bit more. You can delay putting villagers on berries, no problem. So now we're just going for our usual four on berries. And we've cleaned up all the food on our TC. We have lots of food left in this boar. Something we can do. If you don't want to forget to build these houses, is very early on, soon after luring this boar, you can build two houses on the way to the next boar, and that can naturally get you there. But again, I would probably recommend just taking a villager off berries or a villager you're sending to berries to go get those. I'm just trying to cover a few extra tips you can do. Just, you know, depending on the game. Whoops, you're going now. So we're sending villagers now to fit on the TC until 19 pop. Two villagers go here. So we got our four on berries. Something you also saw me do on berries is I control group, uh, sorry, shift queued them so they will take the berries in order. Oh, thank you, D. So, for example, they take this, then this, 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 this. Try and do that around the mill. 19 population, we send two to wood. Normally, we would then we send four to wood at this point on the second lumber camp, but here we're just using the one lumber camp and sending two over here. We also want to build as many farms as we can afford. We can only afford one more. We can afford two more, but now we need to build the mining camp at 21 pop. So yeah, you want to shift queue your villagers to take them around two on each side. I was going to make a video on this, I still haven't quite got around to it. But two on each side keeps them more efficient without bumping into each other and that's kind of a big problem you'll experience in Definitive Edition. I... Is there not a sheep under TC? Oh uh, yeah, there he is. Take a villager off that farm. Not took him off a while ago. So we want four farms in the Dark Age. And with four farms in the Dark Age, as early as we can afford them, we are going to have a decent economy. <coughs> if you're doing a wood and gold unique unit, that is more than half the farmers you even need. So... She just... Uh, <laughs> let's not question the pathing of the villagers, we know that's never going to be a good road to go down. So now we're up to Feudal Age. Important thing to do, not only is to check your villager counts up here, but check them manually. That way you'll get to make sure that your villagers are working a bit more efficiently. You don't want them bumping into each other when you've got six on one lumber camp. It can be quite cumbersome. And we have occasion here where we can't fit five villagers around. There we go. These guys are working okay, these two are working fine. And those guys are still working fine to some degree. 
so Sp Spain's a really good stuff to do this with these days. They are a little bit weaker ever since Conquistadors got the... I believe it's the Cavalry Archer armor class, which gets, makes them take extra bonus damage from Skirmishers, as well as Camel Archers. So... It's uh, pretty bad <laughs> to be going um, Spain these days against some quite good Archer Siths. But, you know, Conquistador, they're still quite strong units. Janissary, they still do shine. And with Turks, you could do something similar to this build. Obviously, you need a bit less gold. So we're about to build our upbuildings. Going to build them with these villagers. As Spanish, you only need to use two villagers. I'll explain that in a second. Next two villagers go to stone, the two in feudal age. And we'll have five in total. With Spain, instead of two on the market, one on the blacksmith, they will build them like this. Because they build them faster. Of course, I was a little bit late setting them building, but you get the point. So we got our five on stone. Next, we need horse collar, and then we need to add farms as and when we could afford them. To make Inquisitors, we need approximately, I believe it's 8 on food and 8 on gold. It is a little bit more expensive for Janissaries, I think they are created faster with their costs as well. It just adds up to requiring more. Uh, but obviously then you have the bonus gold from the Turks and you can pull off just as easily. So add farms as we can afford them. We're going to need to keep about 13 to 14 on food. Because as and when we do that, we will find that we can just run the TC and the castle at the same time. And then your economy after that could be whatever you want it to be. Whether you want to add TCs and boom. Or whether you want to uh, go to Imperial quite fast. So, should be nice and easy for you to understand at that point. We can get wheelbarrow, but it's going to be a little bit early. Again, we're adding farms as and when we could afford them. These two are about to expire soon, so we might have a little bit of idle time on the farms there. We're going to send them to cut a straggler or something. When we have our stone, send your villagers to where you want to build a castle. Always, 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 under no circumstances, build it anywhere other than inside. <laughs> this is um, a key point you really need to drive. There's very few reasons to build your castle outside. Very, very few. You don't build the castle for its offensive capabilities. You build it for its unique unit. If you don't have a good unique unit, don't build a castle. So, we sent our 5 villagers from stone to build this castle. You could add a 6 villager if you're a novice if Spain built it fast enough with 5. But you're going to have it up 50 seconds, nearly a minute earlier than a 28 plus 2 build, for example. So, what we need to really think about is how many on food do we need, how many on gold do we need. And then we go to wood. From there on, we could decide whether we want to add TCs or add more farms. So we're going to start here with, these villagers will go to gold, that's going to be our 8. We send a new villager, the first villager in Castle Age, to gold. And we have a high food count. Now that these have expired, we also need to get these guys to make some farms soon. Just to keep our food count up, but obviously we already have a big enough food count. These guys will now go to wood, because we have our 8 on gold. As you can see, we can keep a bunch of conquistadors. And three is going to be enough to get us started over here. And you get the concept at this point. I would generally mass up a couple of conks before sending them forward. Just add as you go. And you will imp quite fast this way, if you want to stay this way. Something you could do is you could either add some more to gold and buy 100 stone to add a TC, or you could just send a villager to stone now. For example, if you wanted to stay in Castle Age a little bit longer. And there's nothing wrong with doing that. You could also add another one to gold. And basically our economy already, we're almost ready to just pick up wheelbarrows as we can afford the wood for it. 
Obviously we need to reseed this farm, so it's can't quite afford that yet. But we have nine on gold. We're gonna be able to afford to have the economy to get towards imping quite soon. In fact now we could get wheelbarrow. Soon we could get gold shaft mining. I uh, sorry, gold mining. And that's gonna be a really nice upgrade to have. So what's your economy look like now? We're at 18 minutes, 35 villagers. We have quite a lot of conquistadors already on the field. By the time you have three of them is when you really should be considering attacking. Some people would choose to use petards, some people would choose to send more villagers to wood and build a forward siege workshop. That decision is entirely up to you. What I would normally suggest is to do this build and add maybe a couple less farms to the villager forward, build the siege workshop and you're absolutely golden. Although this way, if you want to imp quite fast, you can do. So just start adding farms as and when you can afford them. We need a new mill here to be efficient. And also don't forget we occasionally do need to add in some houses. But this is just one way you can manage your economy and you have to remember there are lots of ways you can manage your economy. You can even keep going full castle age, get padded armor and leather. Use the siege workshop, just make a lot of siege. You could add a monastery now as well if you wanted to grab the relics. It's quite a good idea to do if you have full map control. They don't have the relics. Then adding a monastery is always a good way to play. I'm going to end this guide here because I didn't want to... I didn't intend for it to turn entirely into a guide of more how to play, more how to do this specific build order is what I wanted to go for. So this is just one of the ways you're working your way towards imp right now. You keep making cookie stores, you can even add seed workshop now. You could add a second TC if you want. You could add a third quite soon as well. But the choice is up to you. Point being, 26 plus 2 is a really good build to do this with. If you have a sieve with a good wooden gold unit, there are 24 and 25 plus 2 builds you can do, depending on the eco bonus. Without one, 25 plus 2 easily possible, and I fully intend to make a guide on that. So, that is everything for today. Thanks for watching.